السلام عليكم دكتورة مايا ما نسمعك السلام عليكم ورحمة الله عليكم السلام مساء الخير مساء النور يا مرحبا يا مرحبا يا هلا والله حاج دكتورة يا حبيبة قلبي ربي يسلمك ويعافيك بيت ويهج يا مرحبا فيكم يا هلا يا هلا بالناس ما شاء الله ما شاء الله نبدأ بإذن الله أول <تصفيق> شيء مرحبا في دكتورة وراح نحول على اللغة الإنجليزية بإذن الله Good evening everyone my name is Kawthar Abdullah I'm the president of the Dubai Police University Students Council uh, Stay tuned the Life Tips Initiative titled The Happy Me which is presented by Dr. Mayel Hawari. She is the first Emirati researcher in emotional intelligence. Can everyone hear me? Just thumbs up so I can make sure. Okay. Uh, as I said, Dr. Mayel Hawari is the first Emirati researcher in emotional intelligence. She has a long journey in volunteer work and community activity. She has obtained the title of Ambassador of Knowledge to the Emirates Red Crescent. And she has given many lectures on emotional intelligence, self-control, self-understanding, and learning the skills of problem solving. As well as she was chosen as one of the 50 social media influential accounts in the Arab world. And now we welcome Dr. Mayel Huwari. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you so much, Kothar, for this uh, beautiful introduction. I hope everybody uh, can hear me. I'm looking at the wonderful numbers here, mashallah. We have about 265 people on this, uh, on this chat group. It's a pleasure being here with everybody and it's a pleasure to serve uh, my folk and uh, everybody living on this beautiful uh, United Arab Emirates. So let's get started. Now, I'd like to, uh, after this introduction, Kauthar, um, again, Maya Al Hawari. Um, I like to consider myself as somebody that has struggled and uh, was able to get to where I am today on my own, obviously with Allah's help, but I worked very hard and I would like to share a story with you before we, as an introduction to, to this happy me session. So when you say happy me, what does that mean? So, so we will build this up slowly, but surely, and just stay with me and hang in there. So let me start by saying, okay, so once upon a time, I was uh, a lost soul. I have gone through uh, depression for about five years and depression has been the best thing that has ever happened to me. Um, the story goes, it's been about eight years since I've passed that time. It was a time where I was completely, I was working, I was, a, I, was a, I still am a mother of three children. I had a special needs child, life was going for me, successful. After 10 years of working as principal and vice principal in private schools in Dubai, I, I felt that I had a change of heart, but I was also lost in who I am as a human being. I went through depression for five years, uh, got, tried to get some help uh, at the end of the three years, and uh, at the end of the, the last two years. However, that didn't even help me much, but it was a long journey of pain and agony. I remember when I was going through my depression, it, uh, I, it's interesting because I lost myself twice and I thought of hurting myself twice. And because I had a special needs child, I thought to myself, Maya, where are you going to leave your little child? What are you going to be doing? you should hang in there, have some patience, and try to find solutions around it. We come from a culture where uh, mental health and taking care of mental health is a taboo. Uh, it's something that should, uh, should be avoided because it is, we are not crazy, we are, not, uh, we are supposed to be uh, the, the better children, the best children that our parents brought us and made us to be. But guess what? life has changed but when i was going through my depression there was no one to help me i was left alone in my own world and i was left alone to find answers depression let me tell you this was the best thing that has ever happened to me because through depression i remember there were two two things that helped me youtube was my savior 
YouTube, the digital world at that time was my savior. Uh, yes, I am a PhD scholar. And yes, I'm supposed to read and write uh, journals and articles. But the way I learn best is through audiovisual. Knowing yourself very well helps you heal. To be a happy me, you need to know who you are. Today, I'm the first PhD scholar uh, to research emotional intelligence and its effect on leadership in the Arab world. Why? Because of those five years. Again, it was the best time of my life. Now, as I was going through the sadness, um, pressure, stress, you name it. I mean, you're a, you, anybody can be depressed in, in however way. By the way, depression could be also a genetic, but you need to know how to handle yourself. Being also in a digital world, and I will come to that point, makes you even more prone to it because you're more alone. And I will talk about that. Uh, moving forward, I was able through YouTube to find answers, to understand what is depression, to understand uh, who am I as a person, to dig deep into what I want in life and what is my goal and what, are my, what is my mission. I was so good at what I did, but I hated what I did. For, for me, for me, it, it, it wasn't, uh, it, it was more of a personal struggle and journey. I didn't know what I wanted. I didn't know who, I, know, I knew I was Maya Al-Hawari, the principal, but I didn't know who I really wanted to be deep down. YouTube opened up this, this world of research and I got to know this notion called emotional intelligence. And emotional intelligence, I find out, was five things. Number one, know who you are. So ask a question, who, who am I as a person? That's number one. And it's not about finding out what color you like, what food you like. It's more about um, who you are as positives. I don't wanna say negatives. I wanna say room for improvement. So really looking deep down in yourself and saying, okay, who am I? Am I stubborn? Am I angry? Am I anxious? Am I, am, I, am I going through mild depression? Am I always sad? Why am I not happy? It's these questions that makes you think. It's these questions that you should answer, be able to answer. At that time, I was left alone. I was shy to say that I was, you know, I was going through turmoil and I was only left with me and this screen in front of me. And I felt, okay, this is a chance for me to learn. Moving forward, I was able to come out of it, but um, I learned so much. Depression helped me become uh, the researcher of emotional intelligence. It helped me practice emotional intelligence. It helped me believe in who I am and in my capabilities. It gave me a rebirth to what I want in my future. Again, emotional intelligence, number one, said, says you have to know who you are. Number two, control. How do you control yourself? So if it means to, to get help, that's one way. But it also, if it also means to quarantine yourself and start thinking about the deepest things that you want in life and how can you fix them? So how can I stop being angry? Understand why am I always angry? Why am I always irritated? Why am I always sad? Why am I always somebody that's complaining? These questions are crucial for you to even be able to live in a digital world that we're living in today. After five years of research and getting help, I realized that I learned five skills. The first skill, when you go through any turmoil, any sadness, what happens is that you stop speaking. Silence becomes your friend. So that's one skill. A second skill, what works after silence is hearing skills. Also, a third skill that you, you begin to, 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 to understand is observing skills. You start looking around you because you're able to contemplate and, and analyze. So three things are working together. A fourth skill is thinking skills. Uh, anal analytical skills, critical thinking skills. Those started on autopilot as I was going through the turmoil. Last skill I learned was patience. By the way, 
Patience is the most difficult skill you could ever learn in a lifetime. It feels like it never ends. Learning how to be patient is a journey of a lifetime. It takes so much courage to be able to see yourself in the mirror and say, okay, I need to fix things. Guess what? Those five skills are skills of leaders. Leaders today need those five skills. They always did. But today, these are the skills that are going to get you places. After that, those five years, I submitted my, my abstract for PhD and at Hamdan bin Muhammad Smart University, still a student there, very, very proud to be there. And they accepted it. And I became the first PhD scholar to research emotional intelligence and its effect on leadership. Now, here's what I found out. Back then, I was able, and also, by the way, I, I train. I've been, I've been working with people in, in empl employees in government. I'm a certified trainer. I trained over 900 hours on positivity, uh, tolerance, uh, you know, soft skills in general, self-confidence. I speak to university students. I'm adjunct faculty. All these beautiful things. When we started this quarantine, and this is where, where you guys need to listen up. At the time, I had people around me to help me lift myself up. I had people around, uh, contact to be able to, you, you get busy with the noise and the sounds and you get busy driving, coming back home, uh, interacting with people, learning, face-to-face -face communication. You can't beat that. We are made to be together. You know, in, in, in our religion, in Islam, we say, Yadullah ma'al jama'ah, that uh, God's hand is with, uh, with, with uh, togetherness being together but today and it was those times at the time i was able to pull out myself today after eight years later when i was put in quarantine and i remember when they said okay lockdown 24-hour lockdown i swear to god and this is me the professional right i it took me two weeks to wake up and say oh my god this is actually happening it took me two weeks to be convinced in my head that I have to live alone with just me and this laptop. That it, it hit me that I can't go out. I cannot go get coffee because that's how we distract ourselves. I can't go out with friends. I can't, I can't have gatherings or parties or, or, or even go to the university just because I want to hang out or even go to a lecture and alhamdulillah, you know, I wasted some time there. It's just you and you. So the title today of the session is, how do you become this happy me? How are you just happy alone with you? Being alone in this digital space, that is hectic. Imagine with all the skill set that I got when I was in those times, in depression times, I had to relearn some new set of skills to manage me to self-discipline me in a digital world. Some of these, I found out I needed more patience. You have to quiet down. Your body is so used to fast paced movement. You're always on the go. There's always something happening. When you live in a place and so dynamic, like the United Arab Emirates, you feel like there is something going on every day and night. You, there's something that you can do. But now all of this is cut out. Just cut. What do you do? I found out that I needed to learn some more patience. I found out that I need to manage my fear. Fear of getting sick. Fear of getting corona. Like literally in the face. <laughs> the first two weeks it was like, oh my God, what if, what if it comes to me? And it's all in here. If you let the fear get to you, you're done. The most, the, the highest uh, emotion used, hands down today and even before, but even more today, the emotion of fear. Fearful is something that contains you and consumes you and will get the best of you if it's not controlled. Again, emotional intelligence. How do I control me. If I have some of my room for improvement or negatives, if, I'm, if I have fear in me, how am I going to be able to control that? I had to deal with that in quarantine the first two weeks. Also, 
I had to deal with the difference between alone and lonely. What does alone mean and what does lonely mean? Alone is the positive, lonely is the negative. You can be lonely in here and in here. And that will get the best of you. But you could be alone by choice. By choice, you could be positive because you want to be alone to think, to write, to build a skill, to learn something new, to watch Netflix, to get on Zoom with some friends, enjoy some time with your family, order online, uh, go get some, some, some online shopping, go do some studying, build a business, think of, I, mean, I know gaming is even has become something big in the digital world. So how do you differentiate? Are you lonely or are you alone? That's a question you guys need to ask yourselves today. Four, I learned to be adaptive. Adaptive is the most important skill 2020 and beyond. In addition to emotional intelligence, in the World Economic uh, Forum report 2018, the most important skill is emotional intelligence. But what makes you emotionally intelligent is adaptation. SubhanAllah, human beings are able to adapt to their environments. But keep in mind, habits take 21 days to form. And in Arabic, we say, uh, whoever, there's a saying that says, whoever is with a certain group of people for 40 days, they become from them, i.e. they take from them. They could even blink like them. A new Harvard recent report says 66 days to build a habit. Do you know how many days we've been in quarantine? Two months, exactly, exactly. That if you look back, you say, wow, I can't believe I actually stayed home for two months. You don't realize how much you've learned. You could feel sad. You could feel lonely. You could feel impatient. You could feel that you are just doing nothing, bored out of your mind. You also feel sad. You feel depressed. You feel like you're going to lose it. You can even have a panic attack. But you know what? All these things are good. You will never realize it until it passes. It's exactly how I felt after five years of depression. Yes, five years. You'd say, Maya, how could you have left yourself to go that far? Five years is a long time. I could tell you that it took five years for me to learn these skills because Maya needed five years. My journey is different than yours. Today, our journey is one. We are in quarantine together. We need to support each other because if I'm, if I'm outside there, I'm hurting not only myself, I'm also hurting you. So social distancing is so important, which means it's social me with me, me and this screen, me and all of you on this screen that I can't see, but yet I know you're listening and you can hear me very well. This adaptation skill is something that you have learned hands down without feeling actually subconsciously. The last thing I noticed about myself was the level of self-discipline. Am I self-disciplined? Can I put myself uh, an agenda, a daily agenda, where I actually wake up at 8 or 7.30? Or in a digital space, you can wake up whenever you want, as long as you are able to deliver on time, stick to deadlines, Digital space has proven that clocking in and clocking out is, is, is inefficient anymore. It doesn't mean anything anymore. It only means if you're able to deliver on quality, whether you're working in a government, in government agencies, or you're working, or you're actually studying, nobody's going to tell you, why didn't you come in? In fact, schools have adapted, adapted the word adapted, uh, online and distance learning to, to manageable timings thinking that people are at home. People need their space and time too. We can't be pushing people, pushing, pushing you know, like lectures down their throat. Give them some space, some room. Give them some breaks. 
So self-discipline, are you able to put a timetable for yourself and say at eight o'clock, I'm getting up, I have a lecture at nine, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get my prayers done, do Quran, uh, go sit with my, with my, with my family, sabah al-khair, sabah al-nur, good morning, good, good afternoon. And then after I finish, what do I do with myself? Maybe go have lunch, put a regiment for you. You guys need to self-discipline yourself. This is such an important skill. You have a prime time, high time. Maybe people would see uh, COVID-19 as the worst thing that has ever happened to you. But you know what? From experience, turmoils, turmoils. We say in, in our religion, in Islam, we say, Man Allah, abdan If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves his servant, he will, he will give him some turmoil. Meaning you learn so much. Remember we said five skills? Imagine in this space, you're learning another important skill self-discipline in, in the digital world. Can you be the better version of you being alone, not lonely in this space at this time? Can you do wonders? By the way, I have noticed that people, people have, have excelled in a digital space than face-to-face. People with dyslexia, ADHD, people with, with self-confidence issues, people with, with speech issues, people with even, even computing, just computing, just being able, just, just having some learning difficulties. It, is, it has been the best thing for them. It's like, it's like they found out who they really can be, the better version of them. Guys, it's not only for them, it's also for you. The happy me is in you. The happy me, you make yourself happy. Wallah, nobody, nobody pulled me out of depression but me and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his will. It, it, it was such a beautiful time now that I look back and I say, I've become the first PhD scholar in the region. I've, 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 I've become a TEDx speaker 2019, January. I was chosen among us to social media influencers to lead the year of tolerance and I was awarded the title uh, Tolerance Night for 2019 by His Highness Sheikh Abdul Aziz bin Hamid Al Naimi. I was awarded by Red Crescent around the UAE Ambassador of Knowledge 2017-2018. I'm a joint faculty. I teach around Dubai in different universities. I'm also a, a, a trainer and certified trainer. And I also have a steady day job, and that is the chairperson of the board. So I say my story and I use my story all the time because I feel that we learn best from experiences and personal experiences. They touch you. Presentations today are not all about PowerPoint anymore. I believe that the digital space has disrupted the way we think, see, and uh, believe in presentations. Today, if you don't have content, if you don't have the communication skills, I mean, pay attention to you. Guys, you, you have better listening skills, hands down. Hands down, because you're always listening. You're always, you're, you're, you're paying attention. So even if you're doing stuff, you're still listening. It's by default. Do you know how much you've gained? You never know. I bet you after and from experience after this passes you will be a changed man and woman but i will leave you with this as a final note happiness guys is three things what will make you happy happiness with pleasures so basically traveling coffee uh going out buying stuff uh, being with friends happiness with pleasure, we can't say that. We can't say that we can, we have to just be with our own and be happy alone. No, 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 no. Be happy with what you have. Amma bin'imati rabbika fahaddith. The Quran says, speak of what God has given you, of the, the great things that God has given you. Number two, happiness comes from having success. So when you're successful and you know you worked so hard, and you've improved so hard, and that takes you places, you become happy. 
So happiness comes from pleasure. Happiness comes from success. Number three, which is very important, happiness comes from sustaining values. So when you have a value system and you believe in what you have been brought up with, behavior, your religion, whether monotheistic, any spirituality that you, 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 you tend to or fend to, you have to have that value system. The more, and I've noticed this more when I'm alone, the more I stick to my values, it defines who I am, the more I'm happy. God bless you all. Love you all. Thank you so much. It's about more than, wow, it's about almost 300 people on this chat. Uh, thank you, Kalfar, for having me with you. It's such a pleasure. I have goosebumps right now. And uh, I'm so honored, really. Love you all. I want to give you kisses to everybody. I don't mean it, but you know it. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Maya. I mean, this lecture has really opened our eyes into some things that we didn't even notice. Like we weren't exposed to this kind of information about how we can manage ourselves, how we can control ourselves, that we can even impact the society positively. So I think we have... Um, a few moments for questions if anyone if anyone please, wants to please, i would love to you guys if you need anything uh, even after this chat uh, after this session at maya al hawari choose the platform you want uh, instagram i'm highly highly uh, there i'm always there i answer to everybody because you never know who needs help who needs a question snapchat for ladies and Facebook, for those who want Facebook, I'm also there. LinkedIn as well, Twitter as well. So you're most welcome, all of them at Maya Al Hawari. At Maya Al Hawari. So I think one of the important questions is how do we prevent ourselves from getting to you, getting used of bad habits, maybe internet addiction, um, these sorts of uh, things. Um, all right. So come again. You used internet, internet addiction. Yeah, how do we prevent ourselves from getting used to bad habits? Okay, so again, we want to go back to the three happiness rules. Success, pleasure, and beliefs and values. If you have those right there in front of you, and we use the, the, the five things that we learned in Corona, and that is, I, I always say Corona, so I'm so sorry, but it's funny. Anyway, so <laughs> when you say adaptation, self-discipline, Building habits, guys, is, is, is struggle. Remember, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. It's, we say that a lot, but really, really, you never know until you pass it. And we also say, this too shall pass. That too. I remember my daughter, by the way, she's in university as well, like you, but in the States. And she says, mom, you say that very easily. This too shall pass. As, by the way, it doesn't, it doesn't make any sense to me, to her, she said. I said, mom, you'll never know until after after you get better when you're when, when when we're ill you're ill you feel weak but then to get better it takes time and again nobody will help you but you so putting yourself on a timetable an agenda put those guidelines what do you want to do okay let me give you another idea how we can do it put five things that you want to do every day like goals Every day, I need to read a page uh, of work. Every day, I need to do one page of Quran. Could be one act of kindness. Dedicate an act of kindness, a part of your regiment. Uh, number four, work on my passion. You could be a business entrepreneur online, young, young look at look at mark zuckerberg look at steve jobs look at all those people who are in the, it does a digital space doesn't define your age it defines talent but why we study is because we know we know that it is our certification really from experience I, why do i even have to do phd why i could get a job with bachelors i did my masters in the states and did my phd I do have a love for curiosity, academic curiosity. I love it. I enjoy it. That's one. Number two, I know it will define me from the rest. The higher you get in education, it will define you from the rest. It will. But 
What will add on and be the cherry on top is that skill set, that personality, that charisma, those digital skills that you will have that you can apply to make the world a better place with you in it. I hope that answers your question. Thank you, doctor. You're welcome. So, any more questions? I'm sure, mashallah, there are a lot. Thank you so much. And I ask for Mish Gadir, I'm so sorry, I'm unable to follow everybody's thank yous and everybody's, um, everybody's points. Uh, Kawthar, you're most welcome to pull out some questions if you want. Um, I think an important question is looking at the culture of the UAE and it's not very familiar with uh, mental issues and mental health problems. Right. So how can shy people or even people who have difficulties opening up to their families or friends, how can they manage their mental issues? Opening up is hard, especially in a culture where you are, that is looked down on. Or I'll tell you why it's looked down on. Let me tell you why. Parents love us so much. I talk about my parents because at the time I never told my parents. I never told them anything. Because I knew my mom would be like, you, this is how we brought you and raised you. So, so it's not that she means bad, but she, bless her heart, she doesn't want to see me suffer, A. They don't want to see you in pain. They hate to see that in pain. They want to always feel, number two, that they did a good job raising you. They don't want to feel that they've, 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 they've failed. And that, that is their, it's, it's, up, it's subhanAllah, it's up to their br bringing up. That's how they were raised. They don't know any better. As parents today, me, I'm very open-minded in this. And you have, the, the more a parent is aware, the better. Now, how do we deal with it? You need one solid friend. One solid friend that can listen to you, that is not going to judge you. Somebody that you can call anytime and say, listen, I need to talk. We need each other, guys. Whether it was on Zoom or face-to-face, -face, it's a fact, subhanAllah. We were not brought to this earth to be lonely. We could be alone by choice. I think now you know the difference. But we were not brought up to be lonely. Thank you, doctor. You're welcome. Uh, again, thank you for the audience. And we welcome you in the upcoming sessions. They will be announced via university channels and as well as the emails thank you again dr maya have a good night and wishing everyone to stay safe thank, oh, you. thank you so much love you all guys thank you Kamta. it was a pleasure Wallah. pleasure is all ours so thank sorry you. guys i couldn't respond to anybody <laughs> thank you, you, you. Bye -bye. Thank you.